Hi everybody, it's me, G1 Writer with G1 Insights. And today, I am just going to simply talk to you just like any other day. It is such an amazing day. I'm thankful to be in this moment with you, to embrace everything that is coming to you, that is coming to me. It is such an amazing day. It's such an amazing year. 2019 is going to be a beautiful year, okay? It may not have started out that way for most people, but I promise you, it's going to be one hell of a ride. So that's not why I'm here, though. I want to simply talk to you all about why I named myself G1 Writer, what inspired me to use that name, <clears throat> because a lot of you follow me, and you know me, and some of you know my story, some of you don't, so I'm just going to simply tell you everything, okay? So, and forgive me guys, because I am kind of a bit congested, my allergies are acting up, but I don't really want to claim the fact that I think I'm getting sick. <laughs> So, I'm, I have a horse, see, <laughs> I have a horse, and I have some tea, okay, I have some delicious tea here, some black tea, okay, so forgive me, alright, so yes, 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 okay, so G1 Writer, what does that even mean, what is that, right, so G1 Writer stands for God's number one writer, I came up with that name when I was about 14 years old, maybe about 14, 15 years old. I know I was either going on 15 or I was either one. I was a young teenager, though. I remember that. Um, the reason why I came up with that name is because as a child, I loved to express myself through many different forms of art, like through writing, through poetry, through songs. I've done a lot. I've done a lot of writing. I won awards because of my writing. I will win awards be like composition awards where um, it's an award that you receive when you wrote a particular song or when you're a great songwriter. So I received that in middle school, I believe. Okay, I wasn't even in high school yet, I don't think. Um, either way, so I was really young. I had to be about 12 years old when I got that award. The good thing is this. When I realized my passion for writing, I stuck with it and I never gave up. That was my way of expressing myself. I went through a lot as a child, so I wasn't always able to fully express myself the way I needed to or the way that I desired. And so writing was like the key to everything for me. I enjoyed writing. I mean, it was my outlet, my reason, okay? Uh, my reason to just, Inhale and exhale. It became life for me. Okay? In the midst of me writing, I don't even know how I learned to write. I guess in school, you know, they teach you how to do different things. But it went from me just simply writing. And I remember I did a class. Um, I was in a particular class called Occupational. It was Occupation or something like that. I don't know. But it had a lot to do with, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. It had a lot to do with asserting yourself um, making your needs known, exp self-expression, and all those things. So I exceeded in that class really, really well. And I remember I was in middle school, and I got upset because at first I didn't want to take that class, and I ended up doing it anyway. And so I'm thankful for it now <laughs> because it has helped me tremendously. But as a child, I was like, oh, my God, this is boring, right? So long story short, I kept writing and writing, and I would write different songs and poetry, anything from, like, monologues to um, just anything. I don't care what it was. It could had just been a diary or a journal. I didn't care. I just wanted to write. That was, like, my favorite subject. As I got older, I learned that I also had a thing for music. Me and my friends used to, like, challenge each other and... Um, sing different songs, right? So we would battle each other, like, somebody would be, like, for Monica, for example, right? They would sing a song, and I would sing a song, and we used to battle with each other. So it became really interesting and really exciting. As a kid, it was something to do. I have friends that loved music just like me. But what's interesting is that I still enjoyed writing. So that is when I learned that I can actually collaborate music with my writing, and that's how I learned to become a good songwriter, 
right? So initially I said, well, I'm crazy in love with God, right? Like that was my thing. I just, my mom constantly had us in churches and constantly had us studying the Bible and all kind of things. And she was very, very religious and very spiritual. So everything in my household was, you can't do this. You can't do that. That is devil music. You can't, and she was so strict. Okay. So I barely had the chance to really fully express myself the way I wanted to. But honey, when I got to be a teenager, that is when I decided to be G1 writer. And I didn't stop. And like I said, that means God's number one writer. I follow that so deeply. Like, as I got older, I learned to patent my name, to trademark my name so nobody can't steal it. <laughs> so that was even more amazing. But I remember telling my dad about this and he said yeah let that be your thing g1 writer productions and i was 15 years old and i stuck with that for years even to this day as an adult i'm a grown as woman and i still go by that company and by that name i stand behind it very strongly because there's a story behind it <clears throat> so g1 writer is beautiful when it comes to words i have a way with words okay and i've always had a destiny with words and so no matter which way my life went no matter what i decided to do i always remembered writing it was always an outlet to me so my whole point is how i got to g1 insights g1 insights is basically an extension of G1 Writer. So G1 Writer is presenting G1 Insights. So what that means is anything that presents insight, whether it is spiritual, whether it is educational, whether it is um, humanology, whether it is love, no matter what it is, tarot readings, okay, G1 Writer is presenting G1 Insights. So these are my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions, the facts, Things that I can prove, okay? It's things that I've known, that I personally experienced. That is what G1 Insights is. So when you guys hear me say, hey, y'all, it's G1 Writer with G1 Insights, you know I'm ready to go down. I'm ready to show up and show out. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to give you guys just a little bit of a background of why I came up with that name. So G1 Insights mean a lot to me because that is when I developed more about my spirituality. That is where I came to understand who I am spiritually and mentally. That is when I started to truly learn me. You ever just wondered why you were always a certain way and why you've always done certain things, right? And then that moment of, aha, like, I got it. That's what happened to me. I had an aha moment. Like, oh, I get it now. I know why I'm always so hot-tempered. <laughs> My rising sign is Aries, so it explains it. Okay, we, we're like an explosion. You mess with us too much, we just, <clears throat> we explode. So, <laughs> and I'm laughing at myself because I know me. And many people that know me is probably laughing at this video too. So, long story short. I know I keep saying that. It's not that shit of a video. But I did decide to do G1 Insights because that is when I became into my spiritual self. And I know that, and you guys always hear me say, well, we are spiritual before we're human, so you must embrace your spirituality. If you don't, you're going to always be unbalanced. And so when I got to understand that about myself, there was no turning back. There was no turning back. See, I always felt a little odd growing up or felt like I didn't quite make the cut or felt like I didn't quite fit in, if you know what I mean. People were always different than me. Or maybe I was just always different from other people. Like, I just didn't care about things that most girls would care about. I didn't care. Like, I had friends that would be out partying, living their life, running the streets, doing whatever. And that was just not me. I was like, uh, that's boring to me. I would rather have just stay in the house and read and 
look up things on a computer or just probably just sit on my little phone, my house phone, or just watch my favorite shows. Like I said, I loved music and I loved writing. And a lot of people that I did hang with didn't really relate to those things. My siblings were a lot older than me, so it's not like they could really relate, right? Or they weren't really around to relate to me. And so being in this situation where everybody is in their own little world, I was always the one that was odd. Like, I would go to school and the kids would just be always acting out and doing crazy things. Meanwhile, I was always the one that just wanted to learn. I just was craving. I was craving knowledge. Like, I just had to know. Even to this day, I am the same way. I have a very methodical approach to life in itself. I have to, have to know. Like, I'm so spiritual. Like, I have to know what that means. Why does it tick? Why is it ticking? What is the meaning of it ticking? <laughs> I have to know. So, even to this day, I still crave and I yearn for knowledge, right? That is just who I am. And even as a child, that was my story as well. I yearned for the knowledge. Like, I just could not get enough. And even though my mother was so strict and she wanted me to just study the Bible and be my best self and sit up properly and do what she's telling me to do, ugh, that's something else that just drove me mad when all I wanted to do was just write, do my music, sing in a choir. I just wanted to, to just be. I just wanted to have fun. And I never got to do that. Okay? So, growing up as a teenager, getting into my zone, feeling myself. Yeah, I've learned how to do those things. Whenever there was dancing, arts, I was there. I didn't care. If it was something on addiction or something I wanted to sign up for, I was in it. So that is how I learned a lot about myself growing up. I learned that, okay, so I'm G1 writer, but I'm not just G1 writer. I have things that I can show people, that I can share with others. I have knowledge. I've been soaking up all these knowledges. <laughs> I've been soaking up all these things all these years. I have something to share. I have a testimony. I have things that I need to get out, right? I have things that I need to say. So what better time is it now in my adult life to present G1 Insights? I had to let it out. And when you guys get a copy of my book, you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll get like the full-blown story of exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? But I have to tell you guys, it was not an easy journey growing up. See, when you're a light worker or um, a witch or a spiritual individual or someone who just, um, yeah, I guess light worker would be the word or the correct term, right? But, I mean, you got dark workers too. So, whatever, right? Whatever your thing is, whatever you love, right? You can, I'm sure you guys can understand what it's like growing up in a house where you can't fully express yourself spiritually mentally emotionally like it took a lot out of me so i was always very snappy as a teenager i was always very like angry and upset because i wanted to just be myself and i couldn't and even when i got older of age when i was like 18 or 19 i still was not in a position physically to be able to do the things that i love to do i mean i still was sing and i still would you know, go to shows and perform, and I would still write amazing songs. I even went to Hollywood, and I met some amazing people, and I would sit there and just write monologues with them, and it was so great to just be around a bunch of influential people. Sorry, guys, I still got that horse in my mouth. <laughs> so they inspired me to climb higher. And I remember coming back to New York and doing my very first show in New York. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. Because nobody knew who G1 Writer was. Like, what? Who the hell is that? Like, nobody knew who that was. <laughs> so I was very nervous. And I was very scared. But again, thankfully, I was in an environment where I had support. Where people actually looked up to me more than I knew. So it just goes to show, my whole point is, guys, if you have a gift and you know that no matter what happens, you just can't seem to shape this gift, 
You cannot get rid of this talent. Whatever it is, no matter how hard you try, it just keeps haunting you down. That is how my spirituality is. It just keeps coming at me. No matter what I do, it just keeps coming. <laughs> so my whole point is, guys, you have to do it. 2019 is the year of action. So you must make sure that no matter what it is, that thing that won't go away, that you love so much, that your heart and soul is craving for, there's a reason for that, my love. You have to press forward. You have to share your journey. You must share your testimony. And whether that is through arts, like dancing or painting, drawing, whether that is speaking, okay, oration, whether you are a light worker or whether you do tarot cards or tarot readings, spiritual guidance, I'm a spiritual coach, intuitive advisor, right? So I talk to a lot of people. What do you do? Comment, comment, comment. What do you guys do? Comment, put it in the comments. I want to know what gets you know what gets you going. What motivates you? What is that one thing that you just can't live without? And I'm not talking about food. <laughs> My spirit just heard somebody say food. Okay, no, not food. What is that one thing that you just can't live without? Like if you literally had the freedom to do whatever it is that you wanted to do, what would that one thing to be? Tell me. I want you guys to write it in the comments. Because, see, you guys feed me, okay, spiritually. And I love talking to you, and I love receiving good information from you. So, I want you to comment below and let me know what are some things that truly, truly motivate you. What gets you going? What excites you? What brightens up your day? After you didn't pray and you thank God for waking you up in the morning, or well, after you didn't meditate, right? <laughs> What is that one thing that you just will be so excited to get to? If you didn't have to work a nine to five and you didn't have to go to school, what would that one thing be? If you didn't have to tend to your daily routine, if you didn't have to constantly be a husband or have to constantly be a wife or a mother or a father or a sibling or a caretaker, what is the one thing that you would be doing? I want you to think about that hard. Don't just comment anything just for the moment. I want you guys to really truly think about that. That is your life purpose. That is your passion, but that can also be your life purpose. And you would not know if you don't follow your passion. You have to follow your passion. If you don't follow your passion, you will never know what your life purpose is because within your passion, you can find your life purpose, okay? So again, mine was always writing and I found out that I loved music but still in all, but my life purpose had a different, you know, again, like I said on my other videos, there's our will, but then there's God's will. There's spirit, and spirit is going to always override us, okay? Because there's our mind, and then there's God. There's the divine. There's spirit. So, follow your passion, my love. That was the purpose of this video, to follow your passion. Follow your passion. In the midst of your passion, you will find out what your life purpose is. Because you will be, you know, the more you put that energy out there, like, okay, I'm seeking my passion, I'm doing what I love, the universe is going to now bring you everything that, because you're attracting that now. So the more you put it out there, the more those things are going to come at you. Okay, you want success. Here are some things that can help you be successful. Oh, you want money. Okay, so you're doing this to help you get money. So here's another way that you can make money. Like the universe is going to continually bring things to you to help you grow in any area of your world. But you have to do something. I mean, it's so easy to sit around and complain and it's so easy to point the finger and to point blame on other people. But the reality is, it starts with you. So you have to do something. I mean, who you think is gonna do it for you? Seriously, who do you think is gonna do it for you? A lot of times we, we wanna do something and we can pray and pray and pray. You can burn candles all day. You can sage your home all day.